What's going on everyone, Veritech here. Today we're gonna go over how to make a still image into a 2.5D animation. Check it out here. What's going on everyone? So in order to start the process of parallaxing an image, you wanna bring your image into Adobe Photoshop now you also wanna have a canvas size that is gonna be the size of your final video. So here I've got a canvas size that is 1920 by 1080, and I've just sized my picture to fit right into that frame. So the first step of the process is gonna be making three layers of your image, foreground, middle, and background. And that's just a matter of taking your image, right click, duplicate layer, rename your layer, and make that there. So the reason I have three layers here is just because of the, the way the image looks. I'm gonna have foreground be his body and this front dirt. Middle will be the dirt and grass behind that and the front row of people. And the background will be these back people here. In your image, you may wanna have four layers. You may wanna have two layers. I think the probably the most common and the easiest way to do this is just with two layers but we're gonna give this a shot with three. So what you need to do once you have your three layers, which again, at this point are all the same, we're gonna to need to start isolating them. So we're gonna start with the foreground. And what we need to do to isolate the layer is basically cut out what the layer will be. Now for the foreground, it's really the easiest. We just cut out his body here and this front row of dirt. So I'm gonna start using the magnetic lasso tool. I'm just gonna start outlining his body. So once you've isolated your layer and you have it cut out, you can Command C to copy, Command V to paste. You can label your new layer foreground and get rid of your old foreground layer. And then if you take away the others, you'll see that you have your isolated image here. Now, one of the keys is that when you're cutting out, you wanna make sure you have a feather of about one pixel so that there's somewhat of a smooth cut on the side. If it's too sharp, then this effect won't work quite as well. It's really not a huge deal, but the feather will give it a little bit of smoothness. Hence what you're seeing around his helmet here. Now, again, that depends on how thin the various parts of your image are. Like his fingers start to get a little soft, but it's gonna be all right. So one thing that I wanna fix here as well is this uh, outside here on the bottom, because it was the magnetic tool, I didn't get quite to the edge, and that's really not a big issue. All you have to do is click on a new layer here, and I just want the full bottom, so I'm gonna go to my rectangular tool. Zero feather here. Reason I want zero feather here is because I wanna fill to the outside. So, and I'll just take this, copy, paste, and now you see I've got this full front layer here, and these little bumps here, they'll actually add a little bit of texture, so I'm totally fine with them being there. And for this foreground layer, I'm just gonna combine these two. So I'm just gonna merge layers. Now my foreground layer is there. So, the middle layer. The middle layer is a little bit trickier to do. So what I need for the middle layer is to not only cut out the background, I want to cut out his body and this foreground. So for the middle layer, I'm gonna actually use the polygonal lasso tool, and I'm gonna keep it from about here, and just kind of jagged line my way up to here, kind of just go right through his body, and then keep all of that. So if I cut this, I wanna be selected on middle, copy, paste, and just move this down to where it should fit. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Make sure that fits properly. Okay, now what you can see, if I call this middle, get rid of my old middle. Now I've got my foreground, and I've got my background or I'm sorry, my middle, and then my background. 
Now, the key, and what I need to start doing on the middle here, is removing his body and the base and all of that. And that'll be able to make us move him without us seeing another him when we have these other layers. Because right now we have three of his body. Well, we only need one, and that needs to be in the foreground. So let's work on the middle here. So what you want to do is a series of different tricks here. We really want to start with the stamp clone tool. Okay, so when you click on this, you get a circle. And if you hit option, you have a target. So let's start with the base here. And actually, we'll start with this line of grass. I want to target just one edge of this grass. And now you'll see when I draw, I'll be able to replicate that area. So I'll come right here and just paint across his foot. Now, if you're looking, you'll see that it's not, you can sort of see the line there. So I'm going to actually go back and make my circle a little bit bigger and the hardness a little bit less so that the edge is a little softer. And I'm going to reselect and just go again and just paint away anything down here. And then we'll do it again here. I want to make sure I line up the lines. <clears throat> and you're just going to go in and just keep painting bit by bit until you've essentially erased his body. So I'm going to speed ahead here and try to complete this for you, and then I'll come back. All right, so now I've got the middle finished. And you can see I've got my foreground, I've got my middle, and then of course the background we need to touch up as well. So let me just show you a few things real quick. I've been using essentially the clone stamp tool as my only tool. There's also the healing brush tool. What you'll start to notice when the background is blurred like this, it makes a huge difference. There's a bit of duplicating of people in the background and stuff, and they were all if they were on focus, it would sort of be a mess. Your healing tool. Uh, can can help with that a little bit and it can help smooth out parts down on the dirt here for example if I just go to I'm sorry if I go to my middle and if I really needed to sort of blend some things in here I could target an area and just sort of blend it out now I'm not gonna do that here but in some cases this may help you so the healing tool here may work with the clone tool to help you in some ways so just want to give you that heads up so what we're gonna do here for the for the background is I'm gonna pretty much cut out just from he this front part here. Really doesn't have to happen. It's just gonna save me some time when I think about um, removing him again from the image. So I'm just gonna get rid of about the lower half. All right, so now that is gone. So now I need to go in with my background and remove his body and then that's pretty much it for this one. So just give me a few minutes. Okay, so we are done here. We've got our foreground, our middle, and our background. And the key is that there needs to be some overlapping between the two. So if you look what we've got, we have our background. There's overlapping right here. And let's just give this a little bit more and distance. We'll pull from its slightly different part. Just want to give it a little bit more of a touch. And this is where the healing brush can come in just to smooth that out a little bit. Again, it works well when it's out of focus. And then, so that's overlapping, and that'll allow for us to have some movement. And then the foreground, of course, is going to be overlapping down below. All right. So, what I need to do is save my Photoshop project. The reason I want the Photoshop project is because I want the layers. So make sure your layers are checked. All right, and we're going to go ahead and save. So the next step in the process is going to be taking your PSD into After Effects. So the great thing about the Photoshop document is that it's going to give you the layers and it makes it really easy when you're working in After Effects. So <clears throat> let's just open this up. And 
we're just going to have a new project. So you're just going to take your Photoshop document, drop it in. You want to leave it as a import kind composition, editable layer styles, and open up your comp. Now you'll see we have foreground, middle, background. So this is where the fun happens. We want to turn on our motion blur, toggle your switches here so we can turn on motion blur here. So when we have movement, there will be a little blur. And what I start by doing is scaling the layers. So for the background, I'm just going to make it 101. So it's a little bigger and has some sides that are beyond the comp size here. For middle, I'm going to go with 103 for a scale. And for foreground, I'm going to go with 105. You know what? I may actually bump these a little. I may go 108 and 105 for the middle. So now they're all slightly larger than each other based on distance. So I'm going to tag these scales. So they're keyframe to start. And at the end, this one's going to be 103. The middle is going to be 108. And the foreground is going to be 115. Now we want to do our position. So we'll start with their starting positions, keyframe that. And in the end, here's where we can have some fun. So I want the foreground image to go slightly left. I want the middle to go slightly right. And I want the background to be even slighter. All right, now let's watch this back as we have. Now it's sort of rendering out as I play here, but you can actually see that this is already taking on that 2.5D effect. It's one flat image that we're giving depth and motion based on how far various parts of the image are. So let's just play this back. You can see he's moving here. We've got the background moving slightly. You can sort of see it going on in the front here, but that's really not the focus. The focus is right here at the top. So there's a few more tricks that you can do to make this work a little bit better. One thing that I like to do is drag a light leak onto the image. And this just sort of gives the overall look some, you know, spice, some flair. Not really critical at all. I'll drop it in here and give it a screen opacity filter. Probably drop that down to about 10%. Just going to give it a little bit of pop. Doesn't really do anything too critical, but it's a nice little touch. Now, one thing, one more thing that we can do is give some motion to his body. So check this out. If I click on foreground and go up to the puppet tool here, the pin, and then I just click on the various elements of his body that would be moving, the joints essentially. So I've got the elbow the wrist, center of his body, hip, knee, etc. You can actually give some motion to his body. So we've got this at the beginning. This is how he looks at the start. We'll go to the end, and we're just going to be very subtle with our movements. So his arm's going to sort of flare out a little. This arm will flare out. His knee might come up a little. His knee might go out, his head might kick back just a pinch. And if you look, these movements should be very subtle because the movements will be noticeable if you go too much. Now, if we hit U to see where our keyframes are, you can see we've got the motion at the beginning and the end. So have a look here. Ever so slightly, his body's moving, and you almost can't even notice it. In this case, we may have to give it a little bit more because you really can't notice it. I'm going to move his arm just a bit more elbow to you want to make the movements look somewhat realistic and there you can see his arms actually moving a little bit and we'll give his head a little bit more movement make sure you're over the back end so you're changing the proper keyframes and you can see that now when we play it back he's gonna have some motion and it's going to need to render. So let me render this. All right, so let's check this out on playback. Looks good. He's moving forward. His body's got slight motion. The crowd's moving a little on the background. And the light leak is giving it a little texture, too. Cool. 
So if you speed it up, you can really see what's going on. Great. So guys, this is pretty much the effect, but I wanna try one more thing. Let's go layer, new solid. I'm gonna call this flare, and I'm gonna make the layer black. What I want you to throw on top of this, if you have it, is optical flares. If you don't have optical flares, you can just do <clears throat> flare and use the lens flare. So drop your optical flares in. And we're gonna make this an add layer. And I'm going to change my, op my optical flare here just to a natural flare. <clears throat> Um, we'll go with gloss blue. Okay. What I want to do, and with if you're using just the lens flare, it's totally fine. You can follow these same steps. Obviously, you'll just be defaulting to their lens flare within After Effects. So I want to bring this off the edge here, and I want to put it between foreground and middle. Okay. Now you can see how it's not quite affecting his head the same way. It's going to be behind him. So I want to scale this up to about 160. Brightness will go about 110. And I want to keyframe this. So let's keyframe the position. I'm sorry, we want to be at the front of our timeline here. Position and center position. We'll drag it down to the end. And we want to move it just diagonal ever so slightly and our center position, I just want to have adjust from where it was. And we'll just drag it out a little bit. Now you can see we've got this awesome little flare happening while our shot's in progress here. Now you can see if you want to have this affect different parts of the image, you can move where it is in the layer. If it's on the foreground, it'll affect over the top. I want it to go right behind him. So that's gonna give you just a little bit of extra texture that'll work three-dimensionally. So guys, this is pretty much it on the effect. This is how you make a still image into a 2.5D animation. Now what you can do is export this, bring this into Premiere, add some sound effects, really spice it up, and that will give you the final look. So guys, thank you so much for checking this out. I really hope you appreciate it, and one more time we'll show you the final look of the 2.5D animation. Go ahead and subscribe, like the video, come back for more. We'll be posting all the time. And thanks for checking it out, guys. Have a good one.